In this video, I'll demonstrate how to build a template for finding probabilities related to a sample mean. Now, it will require that the sample mean be normally distributed, which requires either a normally distributed variable x in population or a large sample size that is typically a sample size larger than 30. Either one of those, a normally distributed population or a sample size larger than 30 will get you a normally distributed sample mean. Once we know that the sample mean is distributed normally, it's a straightforward process to standardize that normal distribution so that we can use our understanding of the standard normal distribution to find probabilities. If you would like to understand more about the standardization process, you can click the link that's appearing now. Also, if you would like to know more about working with the standard normal distribution, you can click the link that's appearing now. So to jump into the problem, let's suppose that we have an x variable that has a mean of 240 and a standard deviation, that is sigma, the population standard deviation of 40, and that the sample size that we're working with is 100. Now this population, because the sample size is large, does not necessarily need to be normally distributed. Uh, this large population gets us a normally distributed sample mean just because we're taking a large subsection of the population. So the first step is going to be to define the distribution of the sample mean uh, we know that the sample mean is an unbiased estimator, so the sample mean's average or expected value will be 240, the same as the population average. The standard error of x bar, however, will be different. Um, if you think about it, when we take a group of x values, we are, by design, chopping off the extreme values, and also we are making more likely the more middle values in any event, the standard error of the sample mean is equal to the standard deviation of the population divided by the square root of the sample size. Taking the square root is the same as raising to the 0.5 power. So in this example, the mean of x bar is 240, which is the same as the mean of the population. x bar, or our sample average, is an unbiased estimator. Also, the standard error, uh, our measure of the standard deviation or the spread of the estimator, is 4. And once we have a normally distributed variable, in this case x bar, and we know its mean and its standard deviation, or in this case standard error, we can standardize and use the, uh, our knowledge about the standard normal distribution to find probabilities. Now let's suppose a value of x bar. Suppose that we want to know the probability that a random sample of 100 from the population described in this way will lead to a sample mean that is greater than 230. Well, the first thing we need to do is to standardize or to shift x bar's distribution to the left by its mean, and then to rescale that distribution by the standard error of x bar. In other words, z will equal our hypothesized x bar minus the mean of the population. We've shifted it over by its own mean, and then rescaled by its own standard error. And so z, the z associated with an x bar value of 230 for this population is negative 2.5. From here, we're just replicating the work we did when working with a standard normal distribution. In other words, to find the probability to the left, or the probability that x bar is less than 230, we simply use the norm.s.dist function, and we put in z and we indicate that we want the cumulative version by indicating true. 
and we can see that there is not much probability to the left of negative 2.5 under the z distribution. To get the rest of the area under the curve, we simply need to take the above result away from the entire area under the curve. 1 minus the above will give us the probability that x bar is greater than, in this case, 230. So the probability that x bar is greater than 230 is 0.994, and we know this because x bar is distributed normally because we have a large sample size and because this is the mean and the standard deviation of the population that we sampled from. Now we can do more. Uh, we need to finish out the, the table. Uh, so we need to hypothesize another value of the sample mean. So we could, for instance, look for the probability that the sample mean was between 236 and on the low end and on the high end, 244. And we need to, once again, standardize this new value. So this will equal uh, the hypothesized x bar minus the mean of the population also the mean of the sampling distribution of x bar and then divided by the standard error of the sampling distribution of x bar and so once we have taken the hypothesized value and subtracted the mean of the population from that value and then rescaled by the standard error of x bar we now have a result that is distributed standard normal our z value in this case is 1 and in order to get the probability that z falls between negative 1 and 1, or in other words, the probability that x bar falls between 236 and 240, we need to first find the large area that is equal to <coughs> norm.s.dist, the area to the left of the high z score, indicating cumulative minus the area to the left of the low z score and we can see that the probability that x bar in this case falls between on the low end negative or on the low end 236 and the high end 244 is 0.6827 which is the same as the probability that z falls between negative 1 and positive 1. To find the probability that x bar falls outside of this interval we simply need to take the entire area under the curve and subtract from it the probability that x bar falls into that interval and now we have a bunch of different ways of looking at probability associated with a normally distributed sample mean. To wrap things up, we will work backward from the probability in order to get both the z-score and the x-bar value associated with that z-score. So let's come up with a value like 0.95. So if we want to find the z-scores and x-bar values such that 95% of the observations fall below and above those values, we need to use the inverse of the norm.s function. And then simply select on the probability and so 95% of the area under the Z distribution, the standard normal distribution, falls below 1.6449. And because the Z distribution is symmetric around zero, it must be the case that 95% of the observations fall above negative 1.6449. In order to go backwards from z to x bar all that we need to do is to 
set x bar equal to z times the standard error of x bar plus the population mean in both cases. And all we're doing there is working backwards from the standardization process. So instead of instead of taking x bar and subtracting from it the population mean and then dividing by the standard error of x bar, we are starting with z and then multiplying z by the standard error of x bar and adding that result to the population mean. This template is set up with a clear input button. If you would like to see how to add the clear input button, simply click on the link that is appearing now. Thanks for watching, and I hope that this helps.